Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how I made this Halloween garland. I decided it would be fun to try to make this DIY because I had been seeing the felt garlands at TJ Maxx and Winners, but I was too cheap to actually buy them, so I thought they'd be easy enough to make, and they actually were really easy to make, so I'm glad I decided to try and make them instead of spending all that money on them. Anyways, let's get into the DIY. The first thing you're going to need is some felt, and I picked mine up at Michael's. You're also going to need some string that is the same color as the felt you're using, and you'll need a sewing needle. You're also going to need some stencils. I just printed out some ghost and bat shapes, and then I traced them onto some thicker paper just so it would be easier to trace onto the felt. The next thing you'll need is some teddy bear stuffing. I'm not sure what the actual name is for this stuff, but it's what you would use to stuff teddy bears with. My mom actually just had this lying around, so I just borrowed it from her. Otherwise, if you don't have this, you could probably just use cotton balls. The next thing you'll need is something to trace the patterns onto the felt. I just used some sidewalk chalk. The good thing about using the chalk is that I could easily take the color off afterwards. The next thing you'll need is some twine. And I forgot to add these things in, but you're going to need some scissors, safety pins, and buttons. The first step is going to be tracing the stencils onto the felt. So for each guy that's going to be on your garland, you'll want to draw out two stencils. And here they are once they were all cut out. Next, you're going to match up each shape. So I'm going to start with this ghost here. So as you can see, I'm just laying them on top of each other. And then you'll want to thread your needle. I did this off camera because Sometimes it can take a while and I thought that would be really boring to watch, but I did thread the needle and then I just started sewing the ghost together. So you're going to want to sew around the perimeter of the ghost shape, but you'll want to make sure to leave a little bit of room on the outside just so it doesn't fall apart, basically, because you are going to be filling the inside with the stuffing. Once I would get about three quarters of the way through sewing around the perimeter, I started filling the inside with the stuffing. And then continue sewing until you make it all the way around. And sometimes I would add a little bit more stuffing towards the end just to make sure that it was all uniform looking. And once you get to the end, just tie a knot in the string and then that should secure everything inside. And then I did the exact same thing with the bat. The only difference was that I added smaller amounts of stuffing throughout just because there are some more smaller areas in there that if you waited until the end, I feel like it would be hard to get the stuffing in there. So I just decided to add it little by little and it turned out pretty good that way. And when you're done, they should look something like this. So now the only thing we're missing is the eyes. Originally I was going to use felt for the eyes, but I thought it would look really cute to use buttons for the eyes. Some of them are kind of mismatched, but I really liked how that looked. So. I decided to do that. I had a bunch of buttons lying around anyways, so it just kind of worked out well that way. I'm not sure if it would work better to sew the eyes on before you stuff it, but it actually worked out fine this way too, so I'm sure either way would be fine. And this is what they looked like once I had all the eyes sewn on. The next step is to secure these guys to the twine. So the first step to doing that is to add safety pins to the back of each bat and ghost. Next, I grabbed my ball of twine and I just pulled a bunch of twine off of it. I didn't measure this, I just took a whole bunch off and hoped that it would be enough. I decided that I wanted my bats and ghosts to hang off the bottom a little bit, so I measured out about three inches for the bats and only about one inch long for the ghosts just because they were longer anyways and I wanted them to kind of line up when they're hanging on the garland. 
and then you just make a loop in the twine and then tie it with a knot and the loop is what the bats and ghosts will hang off of. And then once you have your loops, you can secure them to the safety pins. I alternated between the bats and the ghosts and I spaced them out about six to seven inches. The measurements weren't exact, but it was around there. And then you can hang them up on the wall and I just used push pins. Overall, this DIY was really easy to make. The only thing is that it was a little bit time consuming to sew all of the shapes together. That's what took the longest. But I made it through about six episodes of The Haunting of Hill House. That show was really good. You should check it out. It's on Netflix. Um, so it's definitely good to watch something while you're doing the sewing part. It makes it go by a lot faster. Actually making them was really cheap too. The only thing I actually had to buy was the felt for Michaels, otherwise I had everything else. For a piece of felt, it was about $3, and I also had a 50% off coupon, so I paid full price for the one and half off for the other. I had everything else lying around the house, so this was a really cheap DIY. And I decided to attach the shapes to the string with just safety pins. That way, if I decide to use these for something else, or if I want to add some more shapes, I could do that later. Originally, I was thinking about doing pumpkins too, but I just kind of got lazy and decided to do the two, and I do like how it turned out. Um, but maybe one day I will make one with pumpkins too, or if I want to like add a couple pumpkins in there, I think that would look cool too. If you end up making this DIY, let me know how it turned out in the comments down below, or if you post the pictures on Instagram, make sure to tag me in them, I would love to check them out. And make sure to stay tuned to my channel for some more Halloween videos that are coming up soon, so make sure that you are subscribed to my channel so you can check those out. Anyways, thanks so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you in my next one.